Okay, so if you know anything about welding, walking around and looking at everyday things you may come across, you ever look at something that's been welded and just wonder, how the heck was this allowed out of the shop? Okay, so for myself as a certified welding supervisor, after two decades of production TIG welding in the industry, I have seen some pretty crazy stuff in my days. And sometimes crazy stuff on really important stuff. So today I wanna take a look at something and see if we can break it down and learn from it. Here we have four jack stands for a car. These are meant to go underneath the vehicle and support the weight of the car while changing tires, working under the car, whatever. Now, I'm not gonna say the name brand that these were made by. I don't intentionally wanna drag anybody on my channel for work that they may have done, but because these are done a little bit differently than how I would have preferred to have them done, we can have a look at these today and we can all learn something from it. So taking a look at these, upon first glance, they're actually pretty nice. However, if we zoom in a little closer and take a look at some details with the TIG welding, I'm not sure they would pass a lot of the things that I would prefer to have done, and especially on a part that's so important. These things are freaking supposed to hold up a car. So looking at the welding joint that we are breaking down here, this is an outside corner to corner joint, and it has been TIG welded along this joint here. If you ever tried one of these before, they are a ton of fun to weld. This aluminum material that they are made with is approximately 3 16ths of an inch thick or 4.6 millimeters. Now, for anybody who is unfamiliar with TIG welding, it's all good, welcome to the channel. So when we are welding a joint like this, we want to adequately fill up the pass like this diagram here. We can see here the reinforcement or the filler material that we have added to the joint has filled up the welding area adequately, as well as making sure we have proper reinforcement to the top side. Ideally, we do want to to punch through to the other side with proper penetration. This essentially means that the heat input with our welding has been great enough and the penetration from the welding has reached through to the other side. This adds a great amount of strength and durability with this joint. Essentially, instead of trying to weld it on just this first side here, we're trying to weld it on both sides at once. Now, taking a look at the outside corner work on these pieces here, we can see a few things on the outside that we can definitely learn from. Now, again, this is personal preference, but let me explain. Now, we can see that the distance in between each dab of filler material, or teaching this to students in my online TIG welding program, I refer to this term as stepping distance. Now, with an outside corner joint, having proper stepping distance is vitally important to this one. You can see from this example here, I'm providing from some of my work, the stepping distance has been kept relatively close together here. And comparing it to some of the work on this car stand here, we can see that the stepping distance with this one is really far apart. Now, there is plenty of examples that I have seen where I actually don't mind stepping distance being a little bit further apart. But here's a few things I would have done a little bit differently if this was mine here. Now, with this example here, one of the main things that I would pay close attention to is that with this example here, we seem to have a lack of reinforcement enforcement. We can see that in these areas right here, you see how it almost looks like a hollow ridge? We can see that the heat input has cut thoroughly into the base material pretty well. However, without adequate reinforcement or filler material applied, this area has not been filled up as much as we need it to. You can actually see which position that would have been welded in. The filler material has simply just been pulled down to the low side because of gravity. Unfortunately, without adequate filler material that has been applied to each dab as we move, gravity is just gonna pull this filler material down to the low side. And when this happens, it's gonna leave the top edge hollow like you see here right now. Now, this is something that becomes really common when the stepping distance is too far apart. Take a look at this example here. We can see a stretch of outside corner welding that I have done. Looking at it here, I have randomly picked out five steps and highlighted them here. We can see that the filler material has adequately filled up the joint. Now, one thing that we can do here to kind of test this theory out is take a measurement of these five steps. Looking at it here, it would be roughly one inch or about 25 millimeters or so. Now, take a look at this area on the car stand here. Counting another five steps that we have randomly picked out, take a look at the amount of distance the five steps cover here. We can see that this distance is a much greater distance than the example I showed you with my work here. Now, here's what we need to think about when comparing these two examples. We are gonna have a set amount of filler material that we are gonna use for each dab as we move along the weld pass. Now what happens is as we spread the distance of the stepping out a little bit further, we are taking this set amount of filler material. And what we're doing now is we are spreading it out over a greater distance. Now, each of these areas that we have measured out here, they have been treated with roughly the exact same amount of heat input. 
obviously give or take for each one, but they are very close to one another. Now what happens is as we spread this stepping distance out a little further, like we've talked about, spreading out this filler material, this filler material is going to become insufficient. This is why looking at this example here again, we see the hollow ridges. And if we were to flip this over and take a look at things from this angle here, we are gonna see the reinforcement dip down in between each step. Now for anybody familiar with TIG welding, the center of each puddle is gonna be the most prone area to surface cracking, or as some people call it, crater cracking. This is a very common area for welds to fail if there is insufficient filler material. Now with this example here, unfortunately, not only have we exposed the center of each puddle, but with an inadequate amount of filler material, this unfortunately runs a really high risk of having some kind of failure at some point. Now, while most people may not be aware of these things and they might call this completely fine, and to be honest, again, this piece does look pretty good. Taking a look at the stepping pattern across the whole piece, the stepping distance is very consistent for the most part. But one thing that I have worked on very hard over the years of my welding experience is the perfect techniques to get good penetration on a joint just like the one we're checking out here. Now, like we talked about earlier, not only do we want to adequately fill up the top side of the joint, we need to make sure that our heat input can confidently take care of some welding on the other side of the joint as well. This way for something important and super good looking like this we can ensure proper strength as well as durability for this piece. Now teaching this exercise for years, both students that I've taught in person as well as the students in my TIG welding program, this is something with TIG welding that I have worked very hard to understand and master the best as I can. Here you can see I am using the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. I've used this machine for years now, it is awesome. Here you can have a look at me welding the exact same type of joint. You can see that with proper technique, proper patience and stepping distance, I am thoroughly penetrating and punching through to the other side of the joint. When you really nail all of the fine details that we're talking about here, this is what it looks like. Now to be honest with this joint, I'm still practicing this one all the time. One of my favorites. Working with a joint like this, this is a skill that I really like to keep sharp. Now taking these pieces that we're looking at and looking at the back side here, we can see that there is insufficient penetration on the back side of these joints. And to be honest, unfortunately, we don't see a lot of evidence of heat input on the back of the joint at all. Now I know different job sites and different projects have different code and all kinds of stuff for what they expect out of a job like this. I'm just speaking strictly from my experience as well as the many TIG welding tests that I have taken. Now, especially with something that could potentially be load bearing, and especially something like these where you could have people literally working underneath the weight of a vehicle. Personally, when I do a job like this, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure I do this job to the best of my ability. Now, this is where our term stepping distance comes into play again. Like we talked about, excessive stepping distance not only is gonna cause our reinforcement to fall flat, but another major thing that can happen is somebody is gonna have inadequate heat input into the joint. As stepping distance becomes excessive, we are essentially skipping over this region of the weld entirely. Whereas with a pattern that's a little bit tighter like the example I'm showing you here, we can see that we are traveling in a much tighter stepping distance or stepping pattern, and I am ensuring that my heat input gets into the joint thoroughly. Combined with a perfect amount of filler material or reinforcement, this is gonna help to prevent the joint from overheating so we can afford to hang out a little longer and let things sink in. This is the fine balance that's gonna get you results like these here. We wanna make sure we have adequate reinforcement on the top side and consistent penetration on the other side of the joint as well. Now, like I said, I never wanna put anything on blast that somebody else has made. I try and be as respectful as I can about breaking down something like this, but I really love using an example like this as something that we can learn from. So again, with these examples that we've talked about, we can see why this has happened and some of the things that can be a problem when this does happen. So what kind of advice would I give somebody who wants to get results like you're looking at here right now? The one suggestion I would give is the subject of stepping distance that we have been over so far in this episode. Personally, I always recommend to keep things a little bit tighter together. When welding, each step that you take should cover approximately two thirds of the previous puddle. If anything, one thing that I just generally recommend as a rule of thumb, just make sure that you cover the center of each step. Tightening this pattern up is gonna cause you to travel along at a little bit slower of a travel speed. Make sure to allow a brief second or so of a pause in between each step. This is gonna allow the heat input to sink into the base material a little more thoroughly. You're gonna to start to see evidence of the filler material popping through to the other side. That's exactly what we're after with this one. 
So again, I'm not throwing any shade at anybody who made this. These are just a few things that I would personally consider after being a welding supervisor, as well as making sure that the work that I do is as sound as possible. Stepping distance is a huge detail to fully understand and master. This episode here breaks down the details of stepping distance much more thoroughly. And there's a free textbook that you can download for this episode as well. Go watch that one next. Go out today, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.